wrestling fans, trading card collectors, welcome to another episode of Wrestling With Cards. We're back with part two of the 1986 Monty Gum Wrestling Stars Wrestling Card set. Are you all ready for some of the best names in 80s pro wrestling? Are you ready for some quality control issues to be running amok? I know I am, but before we get into those cards, just a few quick reminders of how you can help support my content. Make sure to subscribe, give me one of these, hit that bell icon so you never miss any of my uploads. Make sure to share this video with any wrestling fans or anybody that collects trading cards of any kind. Try to get the word out there. Let's build this community. Also, make sure to check out Wrestling With Cards, the podcast, audio companion to this channel. Talk about some stuff on there that I don't hear, so you're going to want to make sure to check that out. Worlds Collide, Wrestling Card Podcast. Yes, that's right. I'm part of two Wrestling Card Podcasts. Worlds Collide features Tony Vela from WrestlingTradingCards.com. And we talk about all things wrestling card related. So you're going to want to check that out. Hit subscribe and share that one as well. Leave us a review. Let us know what you like and what you don't like. And if you really want to help support the show, links in the description to Wrestling With Cards on Patreon, where you can help contribute monetarily and help kind of build out the show, get your opinion, you know, what kind of content you want to see, maybe be part of the content. And I like to drink caffeinated beverages. So if you want to assist with that, you can buy me a coffee at the link below as well. Card number 21, the Road Warriors. Even though this card says Road Warriors on it, we just have Hawk. And I honestly have no idea what he's doing in this picture. Possibly lifting somebody up, some jobber getting ready to slam him on his head. I'm not really sure. Not the biggest fan of this card, though. And as most of you know, I like Road Warriors cards that feature both, if not all, three members, if you're including Paul Ellering as well. It's the Hulkster, brother. Hulk Hogan, card number 22. This feels like it's more of an early 90s picture of the Hulk. And, you know, not one that you would normally, I would think, see in 1986. Maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you think this is an earlier Hogan shot? Still great old school Hulk Hogan. Love this card. Card number 23, Kerry Von Eric. Another awesome shot of Kerry here. But nothing really else stands out about this card other than the fact that if you look on the right-hand side of the card... You'll see text. And to me, this really looks like they just cut this picture out of a magazine and threw it on here. Card number 24, Dr. D, David Schultz. Now this is a wrestling card. Dr. D, you gotta love him. The slap heard around the world. You think it's fake? What's that? Is that fake? Huh? What the hell's wrong with you? That's open hand slap, huh? You think it's fake? You talk like that? Wrestling needs more guys like this guy. Guys that take it serious, guys that aren't messing around, bringing legitimacy to professional wrestling. Only the tough survive. That's the reason you ain't in it. And this punk holding the camera, reading he ain't in it. Reading these rednecks out here ain't in it because it's a tough business. Anyway, surprising fun fact about this card. To my knowledge, this card is his only pack pullable card ever produced. He did have a card in the 1979 Goulas Racks Roast Beef, but. As far as I know, this is his actual only pack pullable card. So interesting note, and you got to love that image there. And once again, if you look on the left-hand side, similar to our last card with Kerry Von Erich, you'll see that text on there, and it makes me believe that, you know, that once again, they just cut these images out of magazines. Great quality control, Monty Gum. Whoa! You stupid idiot! That is a first you... thing to do! What's the matter? Card number 25, The Road Warriors. Now this is a Road Warriors card. Has this kind of old-timey vibe, I guess, with the poses that they're doing. And maybe that's just because of Paul Ellering's suit, or I don't know. But I'm just throwing thoughts out there. I love this card, though. Features all three of them pictured perfectly. Possibly cut out of a magazine, but if you didn't know any better, you would think they just took this shot for the card. Not the best and not the perfect Road Warriors card, but a very good one nonetheless. Card number 26 in this set, Nikita Koloff. Yep, that's Nikita right there. Great, crazy-looking shot, and just how you would think Nikita would look, or just how you remember Nikita looking. Man, he was jacked, crazy-looking back then. Uh, another interesting note about this card is that this could be considered a rookie card. He had these Monty Gum cards and the Carnation cards that both were released in 1986. But that being said, this is technically his first card of just him by himself, and it's also the first card in this set. So in my opinion, which may not matter for nothing, I would call this his rookie card. Card number 27, 
Baron Ron Ratchke makes a return. Another Baron card. Uh, appears to have this guy in some sort of hammerlock or something. Not really sure. Nothing really else to say or that stands out about this card. Card number 28, Hercule Hernandez. Always loved the character. No matter if it was this time or his time in WWF or Power and Glory in the WWF, I always loved the character. That being said, not much to say about this card. Not a rookie card. His first card was in the 1985 Tops set. And the picture on this is just meh, mediocre. So yeah, that's about it. Card number 29 in this set, the RPMs, the Rock and Roll RPMs. I love these guys. I always thought of this team as kind of like a dollar store heel version of the Rock and Roll Express. I always associate them with Memphis Wrestling. And they always had this really awesome music video that was so bad it's good, which you can go check out on YouTube. Trust me, it's worth your time. Card number 30, Buzz Sawyer. Always loved Buzz as a character and his crazy style, but I would have imagined they would have picked a better image for him to use in this specific card. Uh, that being said, this is considered his rookie card. It's his first card. Card number 31, JYD, the Junkyard Dog. JYD is a guy I used to absolutely love as a kid, but as I grew older, I became less and less a fan of his for whatever reason. I'm not sure. Nothing really important to say about this card, nothing special, no important notes that stand out. Oh, here we go again with crazy Nikita Koloff. Man, they're just nailing these photos that they're using for Nikita. I absolutely love it. Love the intensity. Again, this could be considered a rookie card, I guess. I don't know how technical you want to be, but man, look at this guy. He just, he's intimidating. Not somebody I would ever want to mess with running into him anywhere. Great card. Card number 33, Crusher Khrushchev and Ivan Koloff. Wait a minute. Okay, so a few things on this card. First thing is it says Ivan on it, but he's nowhere to be found in the image. So way to go, Monty Gum. Quality control at its finest. But let's look at the image that appears of Crusher here. He's holding up a trophy, and I'm or what appears to be a trophy, and I'm guessing maybe Ivan is on the other side of that trophy, kind of holding it up as a gather. I'm guessing maybe they want it as a tag team. And they just cut him out of the picture, which, again, quality control. Yet they still included his name on here. I don't know. But anyway, to my knowledge, this is the first card of this person. And I say this person because Crusher Khrushchev also went on to be Smash of Demolition, also went on to be Barry Darso. So I'm assuming you would consider this his rookie card for those keeping track at home. But then again, there are those people who consider... Uh, maybe not necessarily a rookie card, but like a first. So like if you want to use Crusher Khrushchev. Okay, so this is his card, but then his Smash Demolition card would be a rookie card of that character. I get it, and I don't necessarily disagree with it, but just, you know, throwing different perspectives out there. Something else interesting about this card that I always thought was funny. He didn't really ever have a Russian accent, and if you look on the, his arm in this image, he's got the tattoo of the bald eagle. And yeah. So, I am not sure what kind of Russian gets American Pride tattoos, but there you go. Card number 34, Kevin Von Erich and Eric Flair. Eric Flair finally making his appearance. Wow. Okay. So, let's start with, first off, how terrible of a picture this is. Uh, yeah, Eric Flair. Wow. Okay. So, fairly clear that this is Ric Flair in this image, and they got the wrong name, or did they? Maybe this is just some low-rent indie fed ran by Jack Pfeffer and it got a fake Ric Flair running around. The mystery and the intrigue of the 1986 Monty Gum Wrestling Card star set lives on forever with this card. Card number 35, Kerry Von Eric. Back-to-back Von Erichs and back-to-back Eric Flairs. Oh man, Eric Flair, he must have been really over back in 86. Anyway, pretty terrible card overall questionable image used. We can see it's clearly probably Ric Flair, but then again, who knows? Card number 36, Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers, the Fantastics. Yes, another great tag team card. Now, the Fantastics, to me, were always a direct ripoff of the Fabulous Ones as far as the gimmick goes, but their styles, wrestling-wise, were a little bit different. Regardless, I always loved these guys, and this is a rookie card for both guys on the same card, so that's a really cool aspect. Card number 37, Magnificent Don Morocco. Um, really not much to say about this card. Not the greatest image. Uh, they think they could have done better. So moving along. 
Card number 38, Rick Martell. I actually think this is a great photo they used here. Uh, it makes him look like one of the top guys in the 80s with that suit and that look. I could be wrong, but I think the images used here are mostly from his AWA days. Seeing as this came out in 86, I think 86 is when he was transitioning to the WWF and had a little bit different look when he was going with the Can-Am connection. Oh, more Rick Martell. How awesome. Card number 39, Rick Martell. Okay, well, not much to say about this specific card. Uh, really not a great image used. So if I was guessing, who do you think he's wrestling based on that hair? I know it's not Eric Flair. I'm going to guess this is AWA, possibly Gorgeous Jimmy Garvin. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. More Rick Martell. Okay, well, card number 40, Rick Martell. Wow, okay, so the Monty Gum Company sure thinks Rick Martell is going to be the next Michael Jordan or something. Surprised they didn't just put out a full 100-card set of just Rick Martell cards at the rate that they're putting him in this set. But anyway, they might as well throw Eric Flair into this set a few more times, but... Actually, who knows? Maybe we'll see a Rick Martell, Eric Flair combo card later in this video series. Time will tell. You're going to have to stick around and check it out. Not a horrible photo here, though. Uh, kind of reminds me of the 86 Carnation card that he has. I don't think they use the same image, but that's just kind of what it reminds me of. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I can guarantee you if you're a Rick Martell fan, you definitely enjoyed this video. If I brought you some entertainment and some value on today's video, make sure to give me one of these. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my uploads. And until part three of the 1986 Monty Gum Wrestling Stars cards, click the videos on the screen in the meantime to check out more great wrestling card content, and I'll see you on the next one.